This is the AI suite that comes with the motherboard. Now you have a lot of options here. The first thing I want to show you is the thermal radar. This is um, an entire heat map. All the sensors that uh, you know have thermal readouts are all listed here. And then you can see uh, the temperatures here. Here you can see your fans and how fast they're going. Uh, we only have one hooked up to the motherboard. Uh, the rest are hooked up to the NZXT fan controller, but all the ones that are plugged into your motherboard uh, will all be here and you'll be able to see the fan speed. Then we can see the voltages going on all the way throughout the motherboard. Everything looks pretty normal here. Nothing to be alarmed about. So that's nice. There's your fans. Let's go ahead and uh, close out thermal radar here. Now we have some tools here. Uh, this is your overclocking utility. Uh, you have utilities to control your DigiVRM voltage regulation. Lots of things here. You even have the uh, AI charger that helps you charge your devices quickly. This gives your USB 3 speed uh, a bit of a boost and it, and it actually works, so that's nice. All right, let's take a look at their overclocking utility inside Windows. Uh, now, one thing I really like about this is you can make some small tweaks here and just test them out and see how it works. Uh, by default, we only have access to the uh, bus frequency and the voltage, so you can just change it that way. That's what most people are going to do. You're not going to really be messing with the multiplier that often. But if you want to get to all that stuff, you can get to it as well. So as you can see here, we have control over all of the voltages. Um, the thing I would recommend doing is just uh, you know, seeing how high you can get with that bus frequency and then raising the voltage just a little bit. You may have to raise some of the other voltages to compensate, but just a little, you know, bring it up and then, then try it. And once you find something that actually works, run Prime 95 a few times. We've got Prime 95 here. Just run that a few times. Um, you know, let it run for a while. If it's stable, then you can go back into your BIOS and um, and then everything will be fine. You can totally calibrate uh, the way DGVRM works. And like I said, do not mess with this unless you understand this. We are going to be making an overclocking tutorial soon. So I'm going to gloss over this and move on. Since the recording shows you everything, temperatures, voltages, and you can go through and put a check mark on everything you want to see and it just starts monitoring. And I mean, this is good to leave on the side of the screen if you just want to monitor what's going on. It's very handy. Uh, you can do that for just temperatures if you're just trying to like you know get a good overclock and you want to see the temperature go up and down as you're running prime 95 let me just go ahead and do that so i'm running prime 95 now you'll see the temperature start to go up a little bit play this in fast motion now uh, this NZXT um, havoc 140 really keeps things cool so you can see there as i hit prime 95 now the thermals are going up, and the CPU is the yellow one, and, and that's the one that should be going up. But it's uh, going up slowly, and this NZXT should keep it under 50, even though we already have this thing overclocked by, oh, about 600 megahertz. Uh, fan speed, monitor that, and then you have a record here. There's the charger utility. That's pretty self-explanatory. Now under monitor, we have access to the same sensors, but in just a smaller format without the uh, graph. And we also have... You know, CPU frequency information. There's all of our eight cores. All right, here we can update our, our BIOS, which is really handy. And the other thing we can do is we can change the BIOS logo. So they've given you a lot of things that you can do here. System information, it's basically a fancier version of the Windows system information. Talks about your RAM, your motherboard, CPU. And lastly, we have control over our settings, and you can control the behavior of the bar, set it to auto-hide, etc., etc. So as you can see, there's a lot you can do with this application, and it is quite handy. I know a lot of the stuff that's packaged with motherboards these days is not handy. It's just, you know, bloatware. But this one is actually something that I use, and um, I really do like the, uh, the overclocking utility that they've bundled with this. This is the UEFI BIOS that comes with the ASUS 990FX Sabertooth. As you can see here, we've got all the information, temperatures, voltage, fan speeds, everything on top. Uh, and here we have three different performance options, power saving, normal, and the ASUS Optimal. And beneath that over here, we can set our boot priority. If you want to boot from the flash drive, go right ahead. Down here, you have the traditional boot menu. It's like when you press F8 before you go into Windows, you can go to that. And then up here, we can go to advanced mode, and that's where the fun begins. We're in advanced mode. This is where the party is, right here. Okay, main page shows all your information, security, set your password, etc. AI Tweaker, this is where you do your overclocking. Now, when you first get in there, it's going to be on auto. I had it on manual because I'm getting ready to do some overclocking myself. Uh, you can also go down here to DOCP. That allows you to load up uh, any profiles that are with your memory. CPU ratio is your multiplier. We'll be doing an overclocking tutorial shortly, and you'll learn all about that. PCI Express frequency. And here's where we can set the memory frequency separate from the top there. And move it on down here. We've got of bridge frequency, all this stuff. There's your hypertransport link speed. Uh, I'm going to leave that auto and let this up here on the top govern all of that. 
Moving on down, CPU spread spectrum. Okay, for your uh, CPU spread spectrum, if you're doing a really absurd overclock, you can uh, enable this. It's on auto right now. Uh, also, if you're at really high altitudes or at an area that has some strange EMI, this is it, it helps to uh, eliminate the electromagnetic interference. So we've got that for the CPU and the PCI Express. Most people, like 99.987% of people, are going to leave that off. Okay, just moving on down here, we have our um, timing control for our RAM. As you can see here, 99924, et cetera, et cetera. You can change all of this. Just, uh, you know, you don't really need to tweak this much. And uh, driving control, which is very mysterious stuff here. Don't mess with it. Uh, I'm really going to recommend that everyone leaves that on auto. You have full control uh, over the DigiVRM. That's your voltage control. Uh, if you set it to extreme, if you're doing some crazy overclocking, it will, um, I mean, it will give you more power, but it'll also raise your thermals quite a bit. So just be careful when you're playing with this stuff. And again, know what you're doing. We are going to do an overclocking tutorial soon, but it's really, uh, you know, quite simple these days. Uh, one other thing you can do here, there's something called the OC tuner. Now, Asus will overclock the system for you. It'll give you, you know, four, five, six hundred extra megahertz, which is nice. When you click on this, do not be alarmed if the screen goes black. It will reset the machine and then uh, reboot with uh, an OC profile. Let's go over here and take a look at advanced CPU configurization. Now, Cool and Quiet will allow uh, Asus to monitor your system and give you more power when you need it or less power when you do not need it. It'll also lower the fan speeds accordingly. I leave it disabled because I'm a power user and I want all the power all the time. Uh, after you enable that, you'll have some other options here to play with. Um, and you may want to enable that, especially if you're using a, a machine for like a media center or just doing light web, brow web browsing and stuff. But I would assume that most people that buy this motherboard are going to be doing uh, some powerful things. So leaving that on. North Bridge. Now you can figure your memory. Uh, all this here, a lot of this stuff is like server stuff. It's been left in the BIOS. So I'm going to leave all that alone and I suggest you do the same. All right, this is your input-output memory management use unit. It's disabled. Just leave all this alone. You're, you'll be just fine. Uh, Southbridge. Uh, HPET, that's your uh, event timer, and it's uh, much more accurate than the one that's built into Windows. In fact, if you do not enable this with the later versions of Windows, you're probably going to have a lot of crashes. Uh, you can disable this if you're running like an old OS. SATA configuration on the Southbridge. It's pretty explanatory. Um, just make sure you're running in an AHCI if you're running a new OS. An older OS, like Windows 95 or Windows XP or ME or something like that, may not support AHCI. You'll have to run it in IDE mode. USB, just pretty standard stuff. USB hands-on and off. E EHCI is no longer used. Now everything is using uh, OHCI. If you're running an old OS, again, you can disable and enable. All right, this is really cool. Now, this is something that Asus does uh, with their motherboards. A lot of the AMD CPUs uh, that are you know, triple-core, dual-core, and quad-core are actually physically quad core or six core, but they have some cores disabled. Now, to be specific, the ones that take advantage of this are the, um, the Heka, Castillo, and the Zosma. Now, Zosma, those are um, those are quad cores, and they will become six cores. Now, the Castillo is a dual core that becomes a quad core, and the Heka is a triple core that will become a uh, quad core. So, if you have any of those CPUs, go ahead and try to enable this. It may actually give you a couple extra cores. Go back. Onboard devices, all your standard stuff like, you know, your USB 3, LAN, uh, down here that's the uh, audio, onboard audio. So that's pretty much it here. Uh, leave this enabled, you'll be fine. On over to monitor, this is just, you know, temperatures, voltages, fans. So, and then boot. You can set, you know, what boots first, different boot options, F1 for error, which is by, you know, standard stuff here. If you have a flash drive enabled, that'll be here too, and you can boot from the flash drive, install your OS, whatever you're doing. Tools. Easy Flash is really cool. It allows you to flash your BIOS, and it'll work from a flash drive, or it lets you pick a location uh, on the, uh, the hard drive, and, you know, update your BIOS. Pretty cool. All the information about the system there. And uh, you can save your OC profiles and then load them up. So that's the, uh, the BIOS. There's a ton of features in here. Some of the features are server features that have been carried over from, you know, older generations, but they're still here. Uh, so you won't need to mess with a lot of things, but you can really do a lot um, in this BIOS.
floss my teeth and call me Sally.